So good morning, welcome to the secret class. Robert and I are here in the office, we're doing great. We just had a ton of technology this morning, but uh, uh, we're going to make it during the start of the day. Nine thirty two, well, so uh, we'll let you just start off there for the prayer, and then we'll jump in, and everybody can let us know if there's any sound issues along the way, and we'll make sure to take care of that. I guess I could probably hear it. Well, thank you, Pastor. Good morning, Seekers. It's nice to be with you all. All right, nice. go ahead, bro. Okay, so uh, today our lesson is titled Physical Holiness. And remember, this is the uh, fifth Sunday of Lent. And our scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 to 20. And Pastor, if you lead us off in a prayer. Loving God, thank you for your grace and mercy. And thank you for the words that you put to our hearts. As we gather today, we pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit's inspiration to hear your voice speaking to us, drawing us closer together, drawing us closer to you. Thank you for the time we have in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And seekers, I'd also like to thank Brother Joe Sanchez for helping prepare, uh, prepare this lesson. Again, a First Corinthians book of a New Testament book written about 55 AD, and the author is Apostle Paul. And the purpose of the book was to identify problems in the Corinthian church, to offer some solutions, and to teach the believers how to live for Christ in a corrupt society. So some information on the scripture setting. Corinth was a large city, a seaport, and a major trade center. It was also filled with idolatry and immorality. The church was largely made up of Gentiles. Paul had established his church on his second missionary journey. The church was being undermined by several internal and moral issues that led to the open strife and misunderstanding in the body of Christ within the church. So these unresolved issues express themselves in division, envy, jealousy, lawsuits, morality, tensions, sexual immorality, and the improper use of spiritual gifts taking advantage. So Paul heard of their struggle and wrote this letter to address their problems, heal their divisions, and answer their questions. So Paul confronted them with their sin and their need for corrective actions and clear commitment to Jesus Christ. So Paul dealt with the immorality of certain church members. And many of the problems in the Corinthian church involved sex. The pastor, that's a hard one to talk about. So we'll pretend the way you come from. <laughs> Okay, so Paul denounces sexual sin in the strongest possible terms in our lesson today. So let's uh, review the phrase, temple of the Holy Ghost. So those who do not belong to Christ do not have the spirit of Christ residing in them. Thus their bodies are not a temple of the Holy Spirit. The best we can do for our bodies is to make them into a temple for God's spirit. And we do this by placing our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. So the moment that we do this, the indwelling of God's Spirit takes place. How we behave, how we think, speak, and what we let into the temple through our eyes and ears become critically important as well. For every thought, word, and deed is in his view. The pastor does something to think about that everything that we're seeing and doing is in, in view of the board. So the Holy Spirit will then be with us forever, given by God as his pledge of the believer's future inheritance and glory. So when we live by the Spirit, we will no longer gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And our next phrase in terms here is. To live a holy life. And, and Pastor, we've been talking about being holy and living a holy life for the past months. So th this is some more information that we can share. Hopefully it'll stick, right? <laughs> hey, Pastor. So uh, we must have the Holy Spirit indwelling us and filling us with his holiness. We can only live a holy life through the power of the Spirit. Thus, the first step of living a holy life is to accept Jesus as Savior. Paul emphasizes sexual purity as part of holy living. 
and beyond involving sexual immorality and keeping sex within God's design for marriage, we can live a holy life by being obedient to God in all areas of life. Knowing and obeying God's word is the key. The purpose of living a holy life is to glorify God and display his nature to those around us. Living a holy life of obedience to God is living in true freedom from the bondage of sin. But Pastor, living a holy life, again, as we had mentioned before in previous lessons, requires us to, to uh, consider this every day as a challenge. And, and we have to develop our relationship with the Lord and have the Holy Spirit be with us, supporting us, because we can't do it by ourselves. And then that last one, makes people have impression of an idea, you know, that God constricts our life, that you know, God doesn't want us to do things, because, you know, there's no, that we can't be joyful and have fun. But it's that, the exact opposite, that as we submit to the Spirit, the holy way of living, there's a freedom that we're given, freedom in Christ, freedom from sin. And that's, that's what God wants for us, that freedom within our souls to, to live a way that glorifies him. And it's not taking anything good away from us. It's actually showing us what is really good, not the stuff that we've already, you know, that we're kind of lured to and, and kind of desire. Well, this is where society tries to direct our attention sure. to the stuff that's there constantly. It's, this is the goodness that God wants us to have that we can we can have the freedom of. We, we can be free from being bound by all that other stuff that's trying to get our sense. And that only happens through the, through the grace of God. Thank you, Pastor. And Pastor, as a reminder, we mentioned Lent again as we approach the Easter. So Lent is so a four-day period between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday. is meant to be a time of repentance. And usually it's accompanied by some form of prayer and fasting. And these four days are set aside to pray and worship the Lord, read the Bible more, and to pray more often. And the purpose of Lent is the preparation of the believer for Easter through prayer, repentance of sins, giving, and self-denial. And seekers, our, our lesson today, the purpose is to recognize that living a holy life includes a spiritual and a physical commitment. We have to be committed, and just not on Sundays, but committed every day, in every day of our lives. So some background information. In today's lesson, we'll discuss God's call to live a holy life includes not only a spiritual commitment, but a physical commitment too. Paul focuses on the body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Believers' bodies are the temple. Pastor, our bodies are the temple. The temple is people's hearts and spirit. We are the living stones for God's house. Christ is the living cornerstone of God's temple. So Paul's candid and often stern instructions stem from his understanding of God's call to live holy lives in an unholy world. So we'll move on to scripture reading. Again, the verses that we read now are, are from 1 Corinthians 6, verses 12 through 14. It starts off, avoid sexual sin. You say, I'm glad to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything. I must not become a slave to anything. You say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. But this is true, though. Someday God will do away with both of them. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord, and the Lord cares about our bodies. And God will raise us from the dead by his power just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Pastor, those pretty stern words there about uh, sexual immorality and how to live our lives. So Paul offered two reasons why freedom without boundaries is not a good thing. Not everything is helpful, and we shouldn't be controlled by anything that leads us away from God. And Pastor, I guess that's something to think about, anything that may lead us away from the Lord. In, in, in terms of what we want and our desires. So, again, we have to have that commitment in physically, mentally, and spiritually in every day. And that's great. Part of 
message. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say it or not, but we're talking about the sign that God gives us. God is not going to give you a sign that takes you away from his son. He's not going to point you to anything that does not lead you to greater understanding or greater communion with Jesus. Everybody else, everything else, can work. who knows where that will lead you. But any sign you get from God is going to take you to Jesus. Yeah, and, and Pastor, and next week we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer and about the, 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 the Lord won't lead us into temptation. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that's a that's a wonderful thought, too. It's almost like God keeps trying to tell us something, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Paul continues here, so we are to be careful that what God has allowed us to enjoy doesn't grow into a bad habit that controls us. And then Paul indicated that while Christ has taken away our sins, this does not give us freedom to go on doing what we know is wrong. And he continues, as humans, we are a combination of dust and spirit. Just as our spirit affects our bodies, so our physical bodies affect our spirits. We cannot commit sin without our body, with our body, without damaging our souls, because our bodies and our souls are in, inseparably joined. Um, Paul was responding to the prevailing Greek and Roman views of his day regarding sexual immorality, as early Christians sometimes found it challenging to live faithful lives in the midst of their culture's accepted practices. And Pastor, we pretty much see that today also. Not the new one of the sun, right? <laughs> yeah, Pastor. Pastor, anybody have any questions about anything? Uh, not so far, no. Okay, then uh, we'll continue with uh, verses 15 through 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Don't you realize that your body are actually part of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her. Or the scripture says, the two are united into one. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So run from sexual sin. No other sin so certainly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and will give you and was given to you by God, you do not belong to yourself. For God brought you, brought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. And again, Pastor, those are some certain words to live by. And that, uh, that again, we're the we're the stones that make the temple, and the temple lives within us. And that we, in our lives, it comes down to glorifying the Lord, how we live, our behavior, what we choose to say and do. And what a great connection Paul makes because he knows that the people of God, the temple means something. And uh, and, and also a lot of the sexual immorality that Paul would have seen, people would have been familiar with um, was related to you know pagan worship. And so there's practices, right? And so there's another level of kind of the, the, the image that Paul is using is temple worship that people would have been used to that involved such what you know Paul and people of faith would have considered sexual immorality. So to say then that we are the temple now means that not only is that stuff not of God, but we participated, we're doing something to God's temple. We that we would never want to do to God's like, temple that we see before us. And so taking that understanding of how sacred that place is and, and now putting it on us and realizing that we're the temple of that place. Like, we're the sacred temple of God. And so why would we want to do anything to God's temple? Which is our body as well. So it's both, both ways. And, and then Pastor, again, I always comes back down to the purpose of living is to glorify the Lord, is to, to uh, expand or spread the good news, glorify the Lord. And by the sexual immorality or, or doing the pagan things that were described here, 
not glorifying the Lord, take away from the glory of God. Yeah. So that's important to remember that we represent the Lord here on earth. And people are looking at us, people look at our church and, and our, our neighbors look at us, how we treat them and how we live our lives. And, and, and so it's a reflection of, of our beliefs and our spirit in the Lord. Amen. So we continue with some discussion from uh, verses 15 to 20. The practice of prostitution violating the principles of the one flesh and represented sexual immorality. So Paul clearly stated that Christians are to have no part in sexual immorality, even if, it is, even if it's acceptable and popular in our culture or, or, or their culture when it was presented. So Christians are free to be all they can be for God, but they are not free from God. Pastor, that's a, something that we need to remember. You can reflect on that more. Eh? Yeah. And uh, again, the Christians are free to be all they can be for God and, and glorifying the Lord, but they're not free from God. So, Pastor, that means we have responsibilities in, in, in the way that we live our lives. And then uh, our sins are forgiven, but we just can't say that, uh, well, I won't do it again. And then a month later, it happens again. It's not coming from your heart. It's not sincere. So, so we we have responsibilities to live a godly life, a holy life. And that's why we talk about repentance. Right? We keep saying that repentance is not just I'm sorry. Repentance is a change of direction, change of heart, change of the way we think. So before I thought, oh, this is a big deal. Um, I'm only human. Right. Right, perfect, you know, blah, blah, blah. But now we repent, and by the you know, grace of God, God, we're we're turning away from that, right? Okay, yeah, nobody's perfect. I'm turning away from that so I can turn more to the, the holiness of God, right? the will of God that, that God has for all of us, and, and live more into that than, than, than what's behind it. Thank you, Pastor. So we'll continue with the discussion points. So God will aid us in resisting temptation. So, and that's a wonderful comforting thought too that we have by helping you, by helping us. First, recognize those people and situations that give you trouble in life. Run away from anything you know is wrong and choose to do only what is right. And then the last one here is pray for God's help. So that's a, the key point. Pray through the Holy Spirit for God's help to make help you make the decisions in life and recognize the situation that you may be in at a particular time. So many people say they have the right to do whatever they want with their own bodies. When we become Christians, the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. Therefore, we no longer own our bodies. And, and Pastor, that, that's a concept that I don't think a lot of people understand. And, and it's, maybe it's hard to understand, but Again, when we become Christians, the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. So we have the Holy Spirit in us. And then, therefore, we no longer own our bodies. Pastor, what do you think of, of that thought? Well, we belong to God. We were created by God. So it certainly falls in line with everything is God's. Everything. Everything we look at creation belongs to God, and that includes us as well. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, this life we have, life is a gift from God, it's God's life, right? Um, same way we talk about, uh, like our giving, it's not my money, right? God gifted me some ways to make money, so it's God's anyway. Um, the time I have, it's not my time, it's God's time. Everything belongs to God, and so, so along with that, you know, my, my being itself, my physical being, it's not mine, it's, it's God's too. It's a gift, another gift that God has given us. Why would we want to care for it? Yeah, so we have to be mindful of the blessings that the Lord has given us. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as we'll continue, so concerning our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit, as we have been discussing, are reminded that God now lives in us. As the Holy Spirit resides in us, therefore, we are to honor God with our bodies as they are not our own. And, and so, Paul kept emphasizing. That the, our bodies are not our own, they belong to God, just as we can express, Pastor. So Paul said that we have indeed been bought with a price. And it was not gold or silver 
or other imperishable thing by which we were redeemed. It was with the precious, unblemished blood of Jesus Christ. So ordained by God before the foundation of the world, Christ's blood purchased us out of slavery of sin and set us free forever. So Christ's death freed us from sin, but it also obligates us to his service. And as a Christian bodies are God's temple, we are to use them to glorify the Lord. So the pastor by way of you here, so Christ's death freed us from sin, but it also obligates us to his service. And, and Pastor, what, what comes to mind when when we think in terms of that we're obligated to serve the Lord and Jesus Christ? So that's, that's probably a difficult language for people, but uh, the, the illustration that helps me most is actually this right here, right? Not the crooked finger, but the, the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we make a commitment and we have two people who, who express a shared love to one another and um, you know when they get married and they begin their married life it's not that they're obligated in the sense that you know there's you know if, if you don't do this then what you would say but out of a sense of love that we have for one another based on based that, on that and having a commitment that we made to each other, that spurs my heart to want to do what I can to take care of myself and take care of that other person, right? Yeah. Um, so it's it's not that I'm legally obligated or you know I have to you know if I don't make breakfast in bed every weekend that I, I mess up our contract, don't get any idea for it. Um, see, but it's. It's the, the sense of why wouldn't I want to, right? Because if, if this is a gift, if this is something that we've entered into together because it means something to both of us. And so, you know, there's good, good reason then that Paul, excuse me, that uh, scripture uses that imagery of marriage uh, as a way to, to, to illustrate God and God's church, that the church is the bride of Christ. And there's that mutual love goes back and forth. God has given us all kinds of promises. God has said, you know, how we'll be taken care of, all those kinds of things. And then on our part, we have something to plan that as well. And we promise to reward us with certainly. That's right. So you may pass. Thank you. Does yes, anybody have a question before we move on to the conclusion? Oh, uh, well, let's see. A couple of them. Let's see. Let me see. So Linda says, as for our body being the temple, I have been focused on knowing, quote unquote, my numbers, as in blood lab work, because I feel that me saying help me will help me do God's work. All right. All right. I remember a cartoon years ago, a comic strip actually, and um, there was a guy in a diner, and he was like yelling, like, I can't believe this other guy who came in smoking or something. I can't believe he's smoking. He doesn't even know that his body is the temple of God. All this stuff goes on and on. But while he's doing this in front of him, is this sort of triple decker <laughs> banana sun split Sunday, you know, and it's kind of like, wait a minute. <laughs> There's more than one way to damage the temple, right? Uh, let's see. Grace responds to Linda said, Me too. Let's see. Gloria says, in regards to sexual immorality, many times churches tend to shy away from speaking about it because it makes us uncomfortable. So we should address all areas, including sexual immorality. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, we, we all know I you know, work with our young people a lot. And one of the frustrations I've always had is we have this whole discomfort with conversations like this. And I was related to it. And so we just kind of, we don't talk about it. And, and then, then we wonder why our kids go somewhere else to find answers. Yeah. And then we get mad at them for the answers they find when we weren't willing to share with them Christ centered answers about it. Thank you. Get over the discomfort we have and own it, acknowledge it, laugh about it. But I mean, have the conversations that need to be had instead of just kind of, you know, hush hush. It's part of life. No big deal. Except to, that's right. Well, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, ladies. And I think that's it. Okay, Pastor, then we'll move on with the conclusion.
So in today's lesson, this letter confronts the Corinthians about their sins and shortcomings. It calls all Christians to be careful not to blend in with the world and accept its values and lifestyles. We must live Christ-centered, blameless, loving lives that make a difference for God. So Paul reminded his readers that their bodies were dwelling places for the Holy Spirit. He admonished them to avoid sexual immorality, or this brings harm to the physical body and to the church as a body of believers. So spiritual growth and holiness are intentionally integrated processes, and thus embody a person's spirit, mind, and physical body. The signs of a maturing faith are reflected in one who has an alive and energetic spirit, vigilant and alert mind, and a disciplined and controlled body. So the disciplined and controlled body, Pastor, that's hard for most people you know, to have a disciplined and controlled body. <laughs> well, I was saying, when we call ourselves disciples, Jesus called us disciples. 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 The word discipline is, I mean, it, it's all, it's all there. Yeah. Discipline, discipline and disciple, and words even look, you know, they stem, stem from the same. So, yeah, it goes hand in hand. So, and only by the grace of God can we grow in our faith. And a person's mind, heart, and body must give evidence of the holiness of God. And, and Pastor, that's another important point that our, our lives should give evidence the holiness of God by the way that we live our lives, the behavior and the choices that we make. So our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, and they belong to God. So live holy. Easy as that, bro. <laughs> live holy. Holy living. And, and Pastor, we've been talking about holy living for you know, at least a month. And, and what does that come down to, Pastor, when, when you talk to the congregation and you ask them to live holy? What are we, what are we saying? What are we supposed to do? How, how do we interpret that? So I, I've actually seen this a lot, partly because it's been a, our conversation. Several weeks ago, you know, we talked about the will of God. And made a comment about there's only one will of God, and the will of God for all of us is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Love our neighbor as ourselves, right? That's the will of God. So any decision we make about our lives about how we treat our bodies, what we do, do with our days, anything has to go back to God's will. will. How does, so, so to kind of bring it back to what we're talking about here, taking care of God's people, why would we do that? Because it's God's will, God's will for us to love God with all our hearts and minds. So exactly what, actually, the way Linda said it, when she said she's watching her numbers, uh, keep me, so I feel that me staying healthy will help me do God's work. There it is, right? right? So, um, how does that tie into holiness? Well, that's what God wants from us. Holiness is walking with God and living as God wanted us, wants us to. And so, we can't do that. We're focused on ourselves. We can't do that. Our priority is to kind of live for ourselves, love myself only, and kind of put God aside. The will of God is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, love your neighbor as yourself. As you do that, then you begin to think different. You, you, what you do with your life looks different. What you think about the gifts from, from God, you, you take those in differently as well. So it's all tied into a sense of holy living because we're, we're, we are focused on the will of God. And Pastor, then again, one of the keys that we, we pray to the Lord is to help us through the Holy Spirit to, to guide us and, and to lead a holy life. So we can't do it ourselves. So again, we have that obligation. Then we have the commitment every day to pray to the Lord and ask for guidance and strength. Like I said, we can't, and we don't have to. We have to yeah. give to us. I mean, yeah. you know, say to you, I'm here, and the Holy Spirit's pushing you on. You have a great cloud of witnesses. You have a church. You're not alone. We can do this. So, yes, let's live holy. Amen. Yeah. The pastor is in the we can, we're almost out of time here. I think we are out of time. Yes, sir. So we'll conclude with the prayer. So holy and loving God, help us always to remember that your Holy Spirit dwells within us. Let everything about the way that we live our lives reflect your love living in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you, Seekers. All right, friends. Thanks so much for the gift and time, brother. I always appreciate uh, having a conversation like this. Uh, we're going to make the worship. 1045, you can join us or watch us online, be a part of it. And uh, no matter how you worship with us, worship with us. And we will see you soon. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Bye, Seekers. I'll be with you. See you next week.